Welcome everyone to the Rideau Lakes Horticultural Society second virtual meeting with Annick Rousseau, Planting by the Moon. Annick of Berry Homestead Farm has been in Lindhurst since 2016. She runs a permaculture and electroculture based farm where she shepherds donkeys and grows elderberries and is interested in the biodynamic approach to gardening as well as care farming, which is a style of farming which promotes healing. She has over 14 years experience from her time in the Eastern townships, where she ran an agro-tourism farm, raising sheep and donkeys. Anik is an astrologer who offers readings, classes, tarot, feng shui, and aromatherapy services. Today, she is presenting for us Planting by the Moon. Go ahead, Anik. Okay, so thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen first. And there we go. So I'm very glad to be with you. And we're going to speak about planting by the moon. So planting by the moon, basically, um, we will go through the moon in action. We will see what, what the moon is doing to our, in our gardens. Then we will go, we will have a quick look at the planets and the constellation because they have a great importance on the choice of the days where you do your planting and your various work in your gardens. Then we will speak very quickly about the biodynamic concept and we will do a tour of all the plants we have in our garden, which is mainly the, the vegetable plants we can grow in our gardens. So, Planting by the moon or gardening by the moon means really to follow um, a certain number of markers according to the date of the calendar. So basically it's a way of entering of the right plants at the right time and with the right actions. Um, and a lunar calendar is designed for that and it will, it's a great help for gardeners to structure their action and um, uh, to go with the, the day during the month. And later on in the presentation, you will have example of different lunar calendars because there's so much on the web, uh, you will have um, a presentation on that. So the first thing we need to know is the lunar phases because basically, and the little scheme you have here on the, um, Oh, I have a blank. Yeah, you have on the, de uh, on the uh, picture is the different faces of the moon. So the moon has a 28 days um, cycle and the moon will go from the new moon to the full moon and then go decreasing like we see it's the one in phase. And the, inc the increase phase, it's the waxing phase, will go from the new moon to the full moon. So here is just a scheme to show you that there's a different aspect of the moon in the sky. But if we go in terms of days, this is here. So the first day will be one of the day which is the closest to the earth. And then it will go up to the 14th day, which is the increasing phase and then it will decrease from the 14th day to the 24th, 28 days. So that's a good way to represent the cycle of the moon. Um, one thing which is very important when we speak about the moon, it's to make a, a, a great distinction between the word we use, because when we use the word waxing or wanting, it's, re it's, re it's only related to the faces of the moon. So basically the action of moving in the sky of the moon. In terms of gardening, we will use waxing and winning to make a difference between uh, the rising phase and the decreasing phase. But in gardening, you will also use the rising moon and the descending moon. And these two terms are in fact related to the action of rising or descending, but it's, they are related to a position in the sky 
where, when you are on earth. So you take a point on earth, which could, it could be a tree on your lot, it could be a house, it could be um, a, uh, a shelter, and then you will observe the moon and you will see when she is rising and de decreasing. It's a little bit complicated, but I hope everyone understands that. When you have a waxing moon, uh, we say that normally because the energy is rising, so the vitality of the plants will be uh, much, much more resistant and will be much stronger. So normally it's a good time to harvest, to picking fruit, uh, to, and doing so they will have a better, better preservation. Uh, that's the same when you cut flowers, they will hold belt, they will hold better in their vase and the plants will be much more productive. In the opposite, when it's the winning moon, because you have less vitality and it's a kind of a resting time, um, the fruit will be less tasty, uh, the vegetable, you cannot keep them so long and the aromatic essence will be less um, richer. Um, but it will be a good time to work on, on your soil at that moment. And we will see that later on. When the moon is rising, it, it's a, a little bit like uh, when the moon is waxing also because it's a rise in the energy and it's a good time when the sap rises up on the branches. Uh, a lot of people were using that to uh, regarding the season of ma maple syrup to, to make the um, harvesting of that. Uh, and it's also a good time for the branches will grow. Uh, you, you can harvest fruit. So we came a little bit to the same uh, handing. When the uh, moon is descending, it's a good time to to plant, to transplant, and uh, to prune. That these definitions are really general, and it's only on the the, the moon cycle obs observation in in the sky. We will dig. Um, with the calendar, we will see that there is specific days to do that. But if you don't want to use a calendar, you can only work with the winning phase and the waxing phase of the moon. Uh, there's saying that when you have eclipses and when the moon is void of course, or when the moon will be close, very close to the, um, sorry. I'm sorry. When the moon will be very close to the north node, it's a rest time. You, you will do nothing in your garden uh, because basically there will be no effect. And we will see that through the scheme here. So basically, This is the cycle of the moon. The hearth is here and the nodes are very close to the last quarter and the first quarter. And this is your, your line, the, the hemisphere line, the equator. So when the moon is reaching these points here and this point right here, or when the moon is really close to the first quarter and the last quarter, that's the day you want to avoid because we say that then the moon is close to the lunar nodes and here the moon is very close to the earth. So we call that time the, rest, the resting time. Saying that it's not that you can do nothing in the garden, you can work on your structure or do a lot of things, but you don't intervene on your plants. It's very important. 
And another way of saying it, it's here. Here you have the path, the earth, and you have the, the path of the moon, which is this little line here, and you have the nodes here, the ecliptic of the nodes right here. So when you have a rising and a waxing mode, basically, so when the energy is going up and you have a rising moon, it's a very good time to, um, to sow, to pick vegetable, to apply fertilizer, um, at the same time to trim the edges. I wrote here picking medicinal plant, which is okay, but we will see that to pick medicinal plant, the very best time to do it is during the full moon, at the blooming point of the energy. That's very important. And when you have a decreasing or a waning moon, uh, the plants are very much more fragile. Um, normally, they, they, you cannot keep them so long, so it's a better time to, to mow the lawn, to, to plant your vegetables, um, and enrich your, your soil. That will, that will be the most important. So basically, we've gone through the moon, but when we do want to do a proper gardening with the sky, uh, we, we are going to use also the other uh, constellation and the other planets. So the plants in nature, they are defined by four categories. We have the plant with leaves, the plant with fruit and seeds, the rooted plants, and the flowering plants. And I classify them like that, and I give you some example of the different uh, plant we can have in our gardens. And we are going to refer them at the leafy one, the fruit, the roots, and the flowers. With, the, with these four categories, we can then define them through the constellation because the constellation of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn will manage the roots vegetables. Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius will manage the fruit and the fruit trees. Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius will manage the flowers. And Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces will manage the vegetable and the leafy plants. And when the moon, so when the moon is passing in front of those constellation, that will indicate the time to work on the different plant of your garden. When the moon is in opposition with Saturn, and it happens a couple of times during the season, that's a good time to treat, to increase the soil activity, so to bring compost, to uh, put your herbal tea or your composting tea, and to make transplantation. Saying that, the sign of Taurus, they are related to the root plant, but on human body correspond to the brain. Sagittarius, which manage the fruit, also manage the blood system of human. For Leo, it controls the seed, the plants that, with seeds, and on the human body, it controls the heart. Pisces will be related to leaf plant and control your lungs, and Libra will be connected to flowers and it control your kidneys. It's a little hint, but it could be very important when you want to do cure of fresh, uh, a cure or, of herbal tea, for example. Uh, you can do that, you can do them on the right period when, for example, the moon is 
in front of the constellation of Taurus and you're a little bit depressed or you have, then you can have herbal tea of a plant which is classified as a root plant. And that will help, that will boost your, your system. I hope you can follow me with the constellation. I can see any comments. If you have, just go for it. <laughs> so now, constellation and the moon. So when the moon is uh, passing in front of um, a water sign, which is Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancer, well, basically all your leafy plants, which contain a lot of water, will be very happy with that and it will be a great time for them. So we speak about grass, parsley, lettuce. Um, when the moon will be in the constellation of Virgo, Capricorn and Taurus, that are really her uh, sign, it will be a good time to put your garlic in the ground um, or to harvest your radishes, for example, to harvest your uh, root vegetables. Flowers, when the moon will pass in front of the constellation of Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra, um, they will be at their, at their best to, if you want to work on them, to, to make bouquet or to harvest, but also to duplicate. When you want to duplicate your flowers, that's a very good time to do it. Uh, the moon, of course, when the moon will pass through Sagittarius, Leo and Aries, uh, it's all about fruits and uh, fruit bushes, fruit trees, all kinds of fruits. Uh, so it will be a good time to work on them. And when I say fruit, it's not only berries or apples, it's also tomatoes, it's every, every vegetable classified as a fruit. So the example you're going to find on internet, this is one of the example of a lunar calendar. And this is how they classify the, the, the different kind of vegetables. So you, you have the leaf days, the fruit days, the root days, and the flower days. And they're going to give you basically all the explanation uh, what to harvest, what to do. For example, the leaf plant, they, when you want to harvest them, it's much better to har harvest them during flower days because flower days are, they will be much more drier. So they will, you can keep them longer basically. And it will be also the same for fruit day because fruit day will be under the sun. So it dries a little bit the leaf uh, plant and you can keep them longer. So that's an example. Um, just to make a note, because here we have some notice about beekeeping, you can also manage your bees and your uh, production of honey through the uh, moon cycle. So what can be the impact when you are using the, the lunar calendar? I put you here some examples. So for, um, if you want for a, to harvest uh, a water sign plant such as lettuce or cabbage on a leaf day, um, it could be a good thing because the taste will be okay. But um, if you wait a little bit longer and harvest it during a flower day, you can keep it longer. If you want to harvest grapes to make wine and you harvest them during um, a fruit days, that will, they will have a much stronger flavor. So of course, when you go in your garden and you see, I don't know, a strawberry of something, you just want to eat it and that's fine. But if you want to do a big batch of jam or if you want to do a big batch of uh, syrup or wine, I would say it's great to wait for a fruit day 
because you will create much more flavor to your recipes. So just to recap what we have said, so the new moon day, it's always a time to rest. On a new moon day, we just stay quiet. We don't touch the plant, even we can work on, on our structures. Um, then during the phases, which is from the new moon to the full moon, so we are in a process of increasing the energy um, and of course, that's the impact on your soil. Uh, the energy is um, going up to the plant. So it's a very good time to um, um, I lost my mind. I'm coming back. So it will be a very good time for the, everything which is above the ground. So leaf plants, cereals, grains, loans, herbs, and also for, for fruit. So the job you can do basically, they are all here. So to mow the land, you can do that if you want to increase the production of, of grass, if, if you want to create um, more coverage of, of your soil. But if you want to have less job to do in mowing the land, you will do it when the energy is de decreasing basically. So after the full moon, so basically it's going from the full moon phase to the new moon. So the best time to pick up medicinal herbs will be the full moon day. Even it's a time to rest, we still have to work. And because the energy is going down into the roots, the roots, so it will be a very good time to fertilize, to transplant, to prune, um, to destroy weeds. That's a perfect time to do it. And, and basically it's a recap of all the actions. What you will see now on a lunar calendar, this, this will look a little bit like that. Um, we spoke at the beginning that when the moon is in opposition with Saturn, it's a perfect spraying day. So I put you here all the dates for the spraying day of the, um, of the summer and up to the, the beginning of November. Um, so this is the day where if you have a composting tea, if you make herbal tea, um, or that's the dates where you can apply them and, it, and they will be more efficient. Saying that, I understand that it's um, a philosophy, it's a way of doing the gardening, it's not the unique solution, but it's a different approach. So, when we speak about um, gardening with the moon, it's really what we call a biodynamic approach. And the bi biodynamic approach is nothing new. It has been practicing for, um, for years. Um, at, the beginning it, at the beginning, it comes from the Babylonians and the Egyptians that were doing their agriculture uh, in harmony with the um, constellation and the faces of the moon. But the biodynamic has been rediscovered by uh, Rudolf Steiner. Uh, it was around the, um, just before the Second, Second World War. And it, bring, it brings back in the agricultural portrait that we can reintroduce this knowledge. And the one who, has, who did uh, an extraordinary work on that, it's Maria Toon, because she kept for nine years all the books, all the research she did in biodynamic agriculture. And that's because of her, we have now the lunar calendars. 
And the lunar calendars is, that's, this one here is really uh, the complete lunar calendar. So, so this is how it is designed. Here you will have um, a much more simple lunar calendar, but still good and still very uh, pertinent to use. And I put you in here some link where you can go and have a uh, over type of lunar calendar. So actually on the net, there is tons of lunar calendar. They are uh, all different in the design, in the way they are putting things, but at the end, they are teaching you or showing you exactly the same basis. Um, you have also to keep in mind that all the plants are related to planets. So I put you here an example of, um, of planets and I put you the associated plants we can find in our gardens. Um, the good thing about that is planets are related to plants, but planets are related to different parts of our body. So, oops, sorry. So when you are using um, plants uh, for yourself as therapeutic plant or as medicinal plant, it is very important to, to know to which planet they are related because each of these planets are also related to one organs and one part of your body. So for example, Mars is related to your brain, to your head. Uh, the sun, of course, will be related to your heart. Um, the moon will be related to your emotions, but will be related for women for all the um, a reproductive system. Mercury will be related to our uh, mental system, to our stress, to our way of being. So maybe that's why people love so much lavender because in our stressful life it helps us a lot. Uh, Venus. Venus is related to a lot of uh, hormones. Uh, but it's also related to um, our voices, our um, throat. Um, Jupiter will be related to our legs. Um, and Mars is also related to our blood system. And Saturn, it's related to our bones. So they are quite important. And of course, all these plants, when you are taking them, they will have an impact on your different organs or part of your body related to, um, to, 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 the, to the planet in question. So that was just a little uh, information apart. So speaking of biodynamic, basically we are coming to the permaculture because the biodynamic idea is nothing more than the very big beginning of the permaculture. Because basically what is the permaculture? It's taking care of the earth, taking care of people, and have a fair share. So permaculture is a very wide area. And I would say honestly that you will have as much, uh, you, you can have uh, uh, as much different type of permaculture as you have the type of people doing it. It's so wide and so different because it really depends of your approach. Uh, I would say some are very heavy in permaculture, some are not. It's the same with the biodynamic approach. You can be by the book and do a lot of uh, of stop from the stop from the biodynamic, or you can be a light approach of biodynamic, and don't do so many composting tea and um, horn and um, um, bull horns uh, composting. 
but you you are still applying some of the ideas and that's the same for permaculture saying that in permaculture the first thing you need to define and to know it's that the element which are the soil the water the sun and the air are bringing um that to your plant so the plant will get the minerals from your soil the water of course the plant the plant will drink from their roots the sun will feed the plant and the hair will be the balance because if you don't have enough hair you might have diseases in your plant and um, if you have too much hair of course it will dry all, all your plant so the very beginning in a garden starts with the element then in your plants you have two different groups I'm trying to move that apart uh, we have in the vegetal vegetal world two different kind of roots you will have one with um, uh, a most important root and then that goes with little one and you will have plants with a bunch of little roots uh, that are not so strong let it this way that the roots it's not that they are not strong they they don't go so widely in the in the soil so for example in this category here you will have all the leeks garlic even the palm tree and on the other one it's going to be like the peas uh, bean tomato papers and eggplants and you can see that they're the way they are designed uh, their leaf are different uh, one th those one here it's rounded and they have a lot of uh, lines in, in their leaves uh, uh, this one here their lines are very linear they are not rounded they are very um, it's linear lines it's the same for their flowers the shape of the flowers for will be very different those one will be really rounded and this one will be much more oval and you will have three they will go three by three if you see that on different layers that in this category they will go four by four or by uh, five petals so seeing that we arrive to the different families we have in a garden so there is approximately in a garden 12 different families of plants uh, so i put you the name here which is i apologize the latin latin word uh, and i give you the characteristic of the plant their bonus and the example of the plant which is very interesting and very important to know it's uh, which plant belongs to which categories because it will help you to rotate your garden and to have a better uh, growth when you're going to do that and at the same time it will also help you to do companion mix and um, and to help your plant so I, I will not go very deeply with that. You will have access to the pre presentation, so you will be able to read about it. Um, but there's a couple. Um, so this category here is very important because using the wheat, the barley, or even oats, you can regenerate your soil easily so basically they're going to be the plant you're going to use at the end of your rotation cycle so when you have a family of plants 
it's very important to do a crop rotation at least uh, for four years. And doing that, it will help you a lot not to have a contamination in your soil. So you will avoid to have, you will, you will help yourself to have kind of a pest control on the soil. Uh, it's not 100% guarantee, but it will reduce the disease a lot. Um, and when you arrive to the fifth years, you can work with the wheat or barley or, or, or oats, and that's going to help to make uh, your soil to be regenerated. Um, now saying that, when you want to do green compost, so basically you are uh, cleaning uh, your different part of the garden and you want to do a green compost, pay attention to put your compost not in the same kind of family plant. Doing green compost will work and will help you to control your garden if you use it in the different type of families. So basically, if you take, um, uh, I don't know, the compost of uh, uh, the leaves of the carrots, try not to put them with, with the same, uh, you can do the compost of your carrots and you can bring it to the uh, uh, apple trees or to your um, uh, strawberry, that will work. But don't put them near your celery, you're gonna kill you can, you are not going to help him, basically. So, some example of companions you can have, um, that gives you an idea. Uh, the idea here is to work with your vegetables, to work with your herbs and your flowers, um, in order not to use chemical product and to act like a, a pest control. Um, so for example, for, for tomatoes, you can put parsley and mint. When you put mint, mint grows everywhere and very fast. So what we do, we put them in, in pots. And the best way to do it is to put them in terracotta pots and you put the terracotta uh, three quarters of a way in your soil. It, it works very well and it also uh, helped to uh, maintain the roots of your tomato very um, uh, moisturized, let's say in this way. Oh, sorry. Then you can have radishes, lettuce, carrot, and cabbage. Um, so basically four rows in direct seeding, 15 centimeters with interval. That's, these are just examples. Saying that in our raised bed, we introduce a lot of uh, medicinal plants and a lot of uh, herbs companions because they will help you to, um, to control the um, insects. And this is the same with the flowers. We have a lot of um, um, yarrow in our raised bed too because yarrow will help you to control the uh, um, the, uh, the under part of, of, your, of your soil. Um, if you put dill, dill it's, um, it's, it is what we call a sacrifice plant because she will attract um, insect and she will attract the caterpillar in, in that case, they will not go uh, in your tomato or things like that. So, or in, in your lettuce. So that's why we try to have. Um, the cheese works very well with the carrots. Uh, basil, it's perfect for the paper. Um, for the asparagus, didn't try that, but for the, the paper and the beans works very well. And coriander for, with potato is just a perfect mi mix. So basically that's what I have to say. I don't know if you have questions. 
let me know. Compost. So do you yes. do different kinds of compost? Yes, we are using um, different kind of compost. We are using uh, manure from our donkeys and we we are using the compost from our chicken and we also compost um uh, some um you know from the table when you clean your vegetables or things like that so basically we have a composting piles all over the land and we are using them for the garden but we also do uh green compost which is basically when you clean some part of the raised bed you are using these leaves or these part of the plant and you put them somewhere else and we are also doing composting tea so we macerate uh, some plant we just did that with the um, wild estragon we made a maceration with it and we're going to use it to spray on our uh, tomato Anik, thank you very much uh, for this presentation. Um, if you have anything to add, uh, go ahead now. Or, or we just want to thank you very much for this. And I'm sure that people will be uh, referring to it in the future. So have a great evening, everyone. And thank you for joining.